I have made several videos criticizing Jordan Peterson, but in this video, I would like to start off by talking about something I agree with Peterson on. I know his work well enough to criticize it because I've listened to many of his lectures online. While I find his self-help advice rather obvious and most of his political opinions absurd and uninformed, I enjoy some of what he has to say on the subject of psychology and religion. But here I would like to put my own leftist twist on a good point he makes. Peterson talks about the truth we find in different stories. I have had trouble tracking down the exact lecture I have in mind, but he gave a version of the idea when he talked to Russell Brand recently on his podcast. In any case, it goes something like this. When someone writes a story, each character they end up creating is the composite of several real people. Things get added or taken away to make them fit the story better, and in the process we get representations that in some ways are less real, but in other ways get at something that is more real and true than we can get from merely observing someone in their day-to-day -day life. As these stories accumulate, several of them will get distilled into a new story that gets even closer to a truth. If you keep doing that, you finally get to a story that says something deeply true about the human condition and has mythic or religious characters. Jesus Christ represents such an archetype. For all my criticisms of Peterson, I like that he has found a way to demonstrate the value of religious stories in a way that even some atheists appreciate. Yet, I can't help but notice that Jesus challenged the status quo of his day, where Peterson seeks to reinforce it. Christ always spoke up for the most marginalized members of society. He did not just dedicate himself to speaking truth as Peterson suggests, but to speak in truth to power on behalf of those who had none. I will let Marxist literary critic Terry Eagleton take this one. The only authentic image of this violently loving, remorselessly accepting God is a tortured, reviled and executed political criminal who dies in an act of solidarity with the so-called Anawim, the poor, outcast, destitute and dispossessed, in Pauline phrase, the sh** of the earth, the scum and refuse of society, who will form the, co the cornerstone of the new regime known as the Kingdom of God, and of whom Jesus himself is the representative. Despite what Peterson gets wrong about politics and the political nature of Christ, he does understand one of the important things the story teaches us, and I will argue that it contains important lessons for activists. We all get upset with people and lose our cool. Sometimes these people deserve it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes we get mad over petty things. Sometimes when I drive, I start cursing people who drive recklessly. Sometimes we hold grudges or write people off as terrible. Jesus had every reason to be upset with the people who persecuted him. Whether you think he existed or think it is just a story, it does not matter. There is a reason why the gospel is called the greatest story ever told. He did everything right. He stood up for the poor and oppressed, yet in the prime of his life, he found himself tortured and executed in one of the most horrific ways imaginable. For those who don't know, crucifixion is basically a very slow asphyxiation. One of his friends betrayed him. Another denied he even knew him. All except one abandoned him. He did everything right, yet one of the worst tragedies befell him. He had every reason in the world to get angry. Yet what did he say to those who persecuted him? Did he curse them or insult them? Did he get bitter about it? No. What he said, he never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. He never said a mountain and wood for me. Now, I don't want to suggest that people should be doormats, but I still think we can all emulate this example more. I know I struggle with this as much as anyone. Some might think that loving your enemies shows weakness. On the contrary, this is precisely the kind of strength that Jesus showed us. Anyone can return hatred with hatred. This takes no strength. It takes incredible fortitude to show others love when they don't show it to us. I don't know if human beings can or should take it as far as Christ, but we certainly could learn from this example. If this seems like a heavy cross to carry, then I will agree. But remember, the story has two parts. 
Carrying this burden does represent a death of something, but it also implies a resurrection. Before the crown we wear must come the cross we bear. What does this resurrection look like? A loss of the bitterness which makes us miserable and miserable to be around. Not getting pulled down by thoughts of vengeance and resentment. A greater ability to connect with and understand others. It allows us to communicate better and puts more levity in our lives. It makes us more resilient. For those striving for change, this brings necessary benefits, as it allows us to act in solidarity with people we disagree with, but share our goals. Jesus does present a nearly impossible standard to live up to, but people like Martin Luther King have come damn close, and look what he helped accomplish. Even though we will all likely fail, we should strive. In a world that does not seem to value these qualities, this might seem foolish. Our culture will certainly ridicule you as weak for acting this way. I will admit again that this is not easy, but the alternative does not look great either. Or, as Herbert McCabe pithily puts it, if you don't love, you're dead, and if you do, they'll kill you. Here then is your pie in the sky, your opium of the people, your rosy-cheeked consolation, your sweet uh, illusions. Here is the fantasy and escapism that the hard-headed secularist pragmatists find so distasteful. I will leave you with that for this video. To any Christians watching, a good Friday and a happy Easter to you. For everyone, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you really like what I do, please contribute to my Patreon or make a PayPal donation. I also have some t-shirts for sale. They feature the major arcana of the tarot deck that you find decorating my channel. For this video, I have used Force. They are available in different colors and styles unisex, women's tees, and long sleeve. I have links in the description. I'm Greg Belvedere. Remember, all generalizations are stupid, so never speak in absolutes. See you next time. And they hung him on the cross, they hung him on the cross, they hung him on the cross for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. They hung him on a cross for me. They hooked him up the hill. They hooked him up the hill. They hooked him up the hill for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. They hooked him up the hill for me. And they spit him in the side. They spit him in the side. They spit him in the side for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. They spit him in the side for me. What he said, he never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood. He never said a mountain and wood for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on a cross. He never said a mountain and wood for me. What are you gonna do? He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, then I'm gonna cross. He's coming back again for me. That's right. Coming back now, wait a minute. Sing it. He's coming back again. Come on over here. Coming back again. Coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He's coming back again for me. What he do? He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He hung his head and died for me. What did he say? He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. One day when I was lost, they hung him on the cross. He never said a mumbling word for me. That's all right. That was a good one.